there's multiple shapes and sh sizes to decide that a real fat guy is just a bear and it's and hitting an animal. Well, it's not gonna hit a bear. <laughs> well, yeah, I know that. <laughs> but it will determine the, the launch speed. Launch speed. Launch speed. <laughs> Stop! I'm trying to think. I'm trying to put my words together. You're rushing me. Am I helping? No, not at all. No one else can see my hands. Welcome to Launch Speed. Welcome back to Launch Speed. I'm your co-host Brendan, joined by my co-host Zach. And I'm Brendan. And I'm confused. <laughs> Let's get into it. Uh, you did not write down anything for excitements or disappointments this week. Yeah, because my life is just that boring. Yeah. Uh, I work. I sleep. I play video games. Not in that order. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to write down the uh, the thing where you got stuck in a wall, basically? No, no. No? Not worthy? No. Okay, not worthy. All right, cool. I've got a couple things. I'm super low energy. Man. Oh, yeah, I could tell. It's killing me. Everyone can tell. All right, so my dog is a paradox. It's dead and alive? Well, not that paradox. Oh. We got him a dog bed so that he'll sleep in the dog bed. Doesn't have to sleep in his crate for like 12 hours, 16 hours a day. Can't sleep in the bed. So we got him a dog bed, right? I'm like, cool. So I'll like put the dog bed next to me so that he'll stay in it. And then the second night, I think, he got up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, well, I got to take him out. So he got up. He's like not whining the door, just sitting at the foot of the bed. I was like, I should take him out. I got up. I'm like, hey, dog, let's go outside. But I go to touch him, and he rolls over like he's going to pee. So I need to take him out. But then he's not listening to me and following me. So the only way I can get him outside is picking him up. Yep. So I need to take him out. But if I pick him up, he's going to pee. <laughs> and he won't follow me. Did you just kick him down the stairs? Yeah. No. No, I just, I just went downstairs and got some goddamn treats. Lured him downstairs. <laughs> Did took he him pee? Outside. He peed. Outside. Oh, like okay. normal. Like he's supposed to. Like he's supposed to. Because not normal. Because it's normal for him to pee inside as well. Yep. He got halfway down the stairs, and then I guess I did something that frightened him and peed a little bit on the stairs. But but most of it was outside. And oh my god, is he leaks he... like a sieve, man. I know. Drinks too much water, and it shows. Yeah, you guys gonna have to. You guys have to train this dog better. There's nothing we could do about that. Is That's that a... he's just gonna. You could hopefully grow out of that. You could trade it in <laughs> for a new model. Yeah, or a better model. model. <laughs> So the next thing that was disappointing this week is Casey and I got some local breakfast sausage from a farm that we've had meat from before. This like really good a local farm. Is that from the farmer's market down in from the farmer's market? Lawsuit? Yeah. Uh huh. And um, this when I was cooking the sausage a couple couple mornings ago, it smelled incredible, like the best smelling sausage or breakfast sausage. sausage. <laughs> Why do you keep <laughs> saying sausage and breakfast that I've so ever much? that I've ever cooked and it smelled really really good. And then we ate it, and just the flavor of the meat was just not good. So you think they just made the sausage and then seasoned the outside of it? Possibly. It was, like, Casey said it was bland on the inside. And, I mean, I agree. They tried to put some kind of spice combination in there, I think, but it just didn't really work. <laughs> it lacked salt. And even though it smelled heavily of maple, I mean, it's like they wrapped it in a maple casing. And then when you cook it, like, just all... all flavor comes off <laughs> you just smelled all the flavor you just took out of it yeah it's uh it was extremely disappointing that it, it's it was so disappointing it made it to the podcast it was that disappointing yeah because I, I in the moment i was like oh my god i'm so excited for this and then i was just let down oh let down dude that is a massive disappointment just like the next one where we tried to put in a fence this week <laughs> and even though i screwed a couple things up uh, the biggest issue was that the ground was basically concrete. It's the, you know, the Romans, when they first made concrete, they modeled it off of the ground that exists underneath your house. I mean, for like when, when people are going to be like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the ground's hard. Like you don't get it. <laughs> we got an auger and we tried digging a hole. It went down. What? 14, 14, 14 inches. inches yeah 
And then after that, we could probably get about an inch an hour. And it's not concrete because I can cut it with a knife. <laughs> it is definitely we can, and we were, just hard-packed clay. Yeah. And so then we put some water in it. Didn't help at all. Then we rented another auger with a better bit. Didn't help at all. <laughs> and it's just the hardest soil I've ever had. I think had. that's the reason why I'm so grumpy today is because my chest and arms are killing me. From the two-man auger? The, I think the single man because it was just bouncing me for like 20 yeah. minutes. I, I felt like I was going to vomit while using it. Wow. It's like the world's worst jackhammer. It really is. I mean, I get, I'm sure that it would have done great in i don't know normal conditions but that was a huge a huge disappointment and and now i'm not going to be able to do anything on it for a couple weeks and i'm probably going to end up paying someone just to do the to dig the holes i think home depot has a pretty good workforce yeah (laughs) yeah where's the nearest one it's about an hour away really yeah it's in uh waldorf no going to waldorf oh it's like going to hell i know it's the worst place in the world have you ever had good customer service in Waldorf? Never. Never. I'm going to have to say the same there. It, it doesn't even matter like if it's a chain or if it's like a, a one-off, bad customer service. It's like they're they just, don't care. They're all just rude over there. You're right. That's And like you and, and it's apparent even when you're just driving. They're just all <laughs> dickwads. <laughs> I take that back. I have I do have a dislike of this week. Yeah. So besides the fence, besides the fence. <laughs> so do you like it when it starts to rain and you have, you know you have to turn on your headlights because it's a law to use your headlights and your windshield wipers even if it's still pretty bright outside. You need to have both on. Mm-hmm. So that's what I do when I when I see it's raining. But sometimes I never can tell if it's raining or not until someone slows down to thirty miles an hour with their fucking hazards on. Oh, uh, I was gonna say that i didn't know you had to use your headlights but that it didn't really apply because i always put my hazard on when i get a (laughs) drop of water on my windshield i hate people who drive with their hazards on because they still change lanes how does that work they can't do your turn signals do anything your turn signals do not work when your hazards are on oh okay Yeah. yeah and then but like if you need to put your hazards on and you feel the need to drive at 30 miles an hour on the beltway because it's raining, you should probably just not be on the road. I've how much rain are we talking about here? At, well, at first it was just, you know, a uh, light drizzle. Yeah. You know, uh, you could probably set your windshield wipers to the lowest setting and that would probably be overkill. Yeah. But hazards were on. Oh, my gosh. Are you sure it wasn't just a broken down car or something? Since Struggling? I was driving right behind it. Yeah, in the left-hand lane. Oh, not not totally broken down. Uh, on its last leg, limp limp home mode. Well, I followed them for thirty miles. I followed them the entire Beltway and onto Richie Marlboro Road because I couldn't get out from behind them because oh the Jeep gosh. has the worst passing capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> they got over, and I was like, "Okay." No, I was like, "They got over." And I was no. like, "Sweet, let's let's go." And I tried to get up around them, and there's a <laughs> semi right in front of them. And I didn't want to like speed up and try to get in in front of a semi. I don't like doing that to them. Good idea. So I slowed down, got back behind the car with the hazards, and we're now in like the middle-ish lane. And then I get over, they get over. And then they chase me to two lanes, and they get in front of me off the exit. And I was like, no, no, I refuse. Oh, but that's painful. I, after that, I, I didn't have to. They, they went right at the circle, and I went around it. Okay. But just... And then I followed someone on Richard Marble Road with their freaking hazards on. Like, why? What is the, what is the purpose? Please tell me what is the purpose of driving with your hazards on. So people can see you. I don't know. The, the only they time... Invi- they invented these amazing things called headlights and taillights. And if you put them on while it's raining, people can see your freaking car. Hazards... Okay, so in their defense. In their defense. If I've been in like a monsoon before Mm -hmm. at which point like brake lights don't and 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 taillights don't really cut it because if you can only see 20 feet in front of you you know it's it's not not a lot of visibility okay so hazards will help in that situation and only in that situation here's my counter argument (laughs) to that though if it's at the point where you can't see taillights or brake lights you should probably pull over and stop driving Uh uh-huh i agree (laughs) i agree yeah 
I just, uh, I think they should make a law that if you drive with your hazards on, you either have to immediately get off. Like, if you put your hazards on, you have to be on the shoulder to do it. You can't be driving down the road with your hazards on. So what if, could, could you drive on the shoulder with your hazards on? No, because that's illegal to drive on the shoulder. Well, what if what if your car is like, can't get above five miles an hour for some reason because it's broken down in some... Pull off the side of the road, call a tow truck. Oh, Okay. I think there are very, very, very few situations where it's okay to drive with your hazards on. But I, rain is not, is one, not of one of them. No. Uh, and, unless, again, you're in a hurricane. You should probably just pull off the side of the road and wait You out. shouldn't be in a hurricane <laughs> driving. You, you know when you're coming. <laughs> they say it, you know, all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. That has not happened to me in a while. I thought, Did although, we have any excitements this week? No, we didn't. Nothing was exciting this week. Not, not one. Nothing. Come on. Take Next it. week, we're going to the beach. We are fishing. That's fish- exciting. Yes, you're right. We're uh, doing fishing. I'm stoked to yeah, go fishing on the I'm week. excited. I'm excited. Do you, have a, do you have a rod? I think I'm going to borrow one. Okay. I think I have somebody I can borrow one from. Excellent. Yeah. I hope they re- listen to this podcast and realize exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, anything else before we... Oh, looking ahead. Yeah, because we're going to be away, we're going to do some Amazon reviews. Uh, I've picked out a bunch of Amazon, Amazon reviews that I think are incredible. All right. So uh, have you just picked out products that have good reviews or just one particular review? Uh, products with good reviews and specific reviews okay. on those products. And just some ridiculous products. There are some ridiculous products on Amazon. Yeah. Do we have any news? Uh, a couple things. Really? A couple things. Okay. Oh, oh, you mean podcast news? Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, still working on the t-shirt design. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're just like every so other creator. Good at this. I'm like I'm still seventy five percent of the way done. I need. I'm gonna show it to you after this. I think that I think you're gonna enjoy it. No, no shout outs. Uh, yeah, shout out to. Doug and Brian, Casey, all of our Rob, all of our patrons, Jay. I think that's it. Mike, is it Mike? Mike. Mike's, yeah, yeah. Mike's patron. Mike, 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 Mike. Our bear bits this week are not that great, but there was a Franco-Canadian man who was doing research, or not even research. He was just recording sounds in the wild. He was in the middle of nowhere, and if you can guess, a bear got him. Canada. <laughs> uh, and he was with somebody, and yeah, bear got him. Killed him? Apparently, according to the story... He'd never been on live television. He'd never been on live television. The bear dragged him out of his tent. In the in the night? In the middle of the night. And they found him, like uh, I think it was three miles away. Wow. Yeah. So I'm thinking he did something wrong. Because a bear... Is not going to be that curious in what's going on in your tent. Yeah, he must have like tried to. He heard about that guy who stabbed the other bear with a pocket knife, and he tried the same move. Nope. And the bear was like, <laughs> "Yeah, bitch, you're coming with me." I, I I'm gonna guess he was having a late night snack of venison jerky <laughs> in his tent, and the bear was like, "What is that? I need it. I need it." Is the gentleman deceased? Very. Gotcha. Very deceased. They they found the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, which is the silliest name for <laughs> police officers. Royal Mounted. Yeah. No. Uh, no. They found him. Uh, it was. I think it was a, a day or two later. It was a grizzly bear. So they are more aggressive than black bears. Yeah. But still, seems unavoidable. Excuse me. Seems avoidable. Oh, <laughs> it's like we're all bound to die to bears. <laughs> Natural selection. So, do you want to go visit Canada now? I would like to visit Canada. I have no interest in going to Canada to record nature sounds for a musical project. Is that what he was doing? That's what he was doing. He's traveling along the Mackenzie River. I hope he gets an A. He he was a composer. He worked with some large oh. symphony, the Brittany Symphony Orchestra. Not the Royal Mountain Britain no. Symphony or- Orchestra? No. He was a unique artist inspired by open spaces and nature. Now he's inspiration to bears. <laughs> That's it for Bear Bits. 
That's fair enough. Moving on to other animals that you love. Spiders. That's not an animal. Spider? It's a devil worshiper. Oh, yeah? I do. You know you put eight spiders in a circle and it opens a portal to hell? Wouldn't surprise me. (laughs) (laughs) So, Mr. Spider-Man is no longer going to be a part of the Marvel Universe. Well, they're still in negotiations. Well, kind of, but it's. <laughs> I think it's not going to happen. Uh, let me just double check here, but there was an update, and Sony says they're kind of still in negotiations. It seems like it's 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 about to just fail. Negotiations yeah. are about to just fail. Uh, but yet, no, uh, Disney was getting a very small percentage of these Sony Spider-Man movies, so... They allowed Spider-Man to be a part of the Marvel Universe for, like, would you say it was? 5%? Yeah. And in turn, uh, they could have Spider-Man in their movies, in Disney's movies, like the Avengers and gotcha. what have you. So that was the trade-off. Uh, this most recent movie, uh, Far From Home, is Sony's highest grossing film of all time. So I guess they're ready to part ways with Disney and give them that 5%. And they just couldn't come to an agreement. Uh, apparently, Disney was asking for 50-50. And I, it, this might not be final. Okay. This might not be final. But Disney wanted more money. And Sony was like, nope. Speaking of which, we watched Into the Spider-Verse. Casey and I watched Into the Spider-Verse last weekend. I was telling you about it last yeah. night. It's really good. It's really, really good. And that's that's a Sony exclusive movie right there. I was, I, I've been told it has been excellent. And I want to watch it. Casey did not have high hopes. I had heard good things about it, but it ended up being really good. Did she like it? She enjoyed it a lot. She just she just went into it like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. And I was like... And then she thought yeah. it was adorable at certain parts? Uh, certain parts, but the rest of it was just really good. Okay. And, and they did a really good job with the artwork, which is unique. Unique-ish for a movie, at least. and Because uh, it's a cartoon. Yeah. And uh, the voice acting was decent. They had a lot of big names in there. And the storyline was good. And the banter was funny. So, <laughs> excellent. It's like all you can ask for in a movie. Do it, you was, think, it was pretty great. Do you think Disney might just buy out Sony? I think Disney might try and buy the rights to Spider Man because obviously Spider Man as a franchise has been very successful. They've had like, what, six Spider Man movies in the <laughs> last 15 years? Yes, yeah, starting with Tobey Maguire. Yeah, he and he's the only Spider Man to get three movies. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know why they kept remaking them. I don't get it. Did Tom Holland have a origin story? I don't know. I don't. Did he have his own standalone Spider-Man movie? I think so. I don't know. I really stopped following Spider-Man after all that. It's like spiders are gross, dude. I feel like I, I watched his or like a origin story movie. I don't know. That, I don't know. See, Spider-Man wasn't always. My, he's not my favorite. Definitely not my favorite. He's probably on the low end of the scale for me. What for some reason one of the most popular? Yeah, I think it's because he's you know Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland's brought Spider Man to the forefront. You think? Yeah. Okay. Because Stan Lee was like, "This is exactly who I pictured for Spider Man as Tom Holland." Really? Yes. And wow. That's why everyone's like, "Tom Holland's amazing as Spider Man." Oh my gosh! I don't think he's that good of an actor. I don't know. Do you? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if I've seen him in anything. He obviously doesn't stand out to me. (laughs) He just seems like a kid lost on a movie set. That's how I picture him. Mm. I I did think that Tobey Maguire, uh, they could have picked somebody better for the role. But maybe it's nostalgic, but I thought, I think now that it's fitting. Yeah. Because Spider-Man was a bit of a nerd. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, absolute dweeb and uh, i'd say tommy mcguire is also a nerd and a dweeb but let's move <laughs> on because the mandalorian trailer came out this past weekend is that what you showed me right for that's what i showed you right for this it's the star wars tv show coming out on disney plus i kind of want to get disney plus because that looked really really well done it did didn't it 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 uh, i like i really like the star wars uh, universe universe yeah i've not liked all the movies but agreed I, i've liked the universe i i like it because it's so like gritty it's like dark and gritty yeah and there's like i don't know it's just one of those things that's like makes you feel hopeful kind of in a in a weird <laughs> sappy way 
uh, and then Disney just shits on the Star Wars movies. But uh, the uh, the show is supposed to be really good. I mean, it's all hype. Nobody's yeah. really seen anything about it yet. Uh, it's supposed to be good. It, it based on the trailer, it looks like it's produced well. Has have they done no uh, like you know bring a couple like critics in to watch it beforehand to give it reviews? Probably not because it comes out November twelfth. Is that too far away? And that's too far away. That I would assume. I mean, I don't know their schedule. Uh, okay. But I'm excited for it. I think I'm probably going to get Disney+. Plus. It also has the added benefit of being able to watch all the uh, Marvel movies. Yeah. Which which does help. You could just pirate them all. I could pirate them all. I could. Why you not? Could. Why not? I don't see. There's absolutely no reason not to pirate it. Do they even prosecute people who pirate movies anymore? They do, but you're getting ahead of ourselves. Are, am I? You are. Would you look at that? What do you have here about DIY stuff? <laughs> so, I was enjoying a lovely lunch of tacos that had been probably sitting out for four days. Oh, nice. They weren't that stellar. But I was browsing through my social media, and I realized that the amount of shitty DIY that it's like it's just rampant on social media. It's all over the place. And so somebody shared it and they they like tag somebody and they're like, here's how you should fix it. And I was like, oh, cool. Like drywall. Like, you know, that's something I do. Or they're f- fixing a hole in drywall. Yeah. Fixing a hole okay. in drywall. And I was like, yeah, I, I want to see how this guy does it. Cause like, I'm sure it's exactly the same way I do. Cause it, there's a couple, there's a few logical ways to do it. And this guy disappointed all of those. <laughs> <laughs> My man cut an avocado shaped hole in the wall, made the hole like six times larger and it's still a hole like he didn't cut stud to stud and put a new patch of drywall in he's just like i'm gonna put this floating piece of drywall in the drywall so i that i watched the video with you i assumed that he wasn't gonna back it with anything he at least put wood behind the drywall and screwed the drywall into the wood but i think i was thinking he wasn't gonna do that (laughs) He was just going to put it up there and mud it so that if you pressed in the middle, it would just fall through. That's really what I thought was going to happen there. He didn't He didn't tape. He used mud as the adhesive to Which the wall. Which just doesn't work. It, that, that patch is going to last a total of a week. Yeah. I, the, the DIY stuff on the internet is absolutely ridiculous. But on that note, there are some that are so ridiculous that they're great. That's You've seen the ramen patching stuff. Yeah, that guy's awesome. So, is it just one guy? I'm, it probably started with yeah. one guy. Uh, he patched. I forget the first thing was I it saw. A sink? I saw the first. I thing think I it saw was, was a sink. kitchen sink or a bathroom sink. Yeah. So there's like a a hole in it, and he crushed up ramen and super glued it together, and then kept doing that, and eventually got it up to the point where it was level with the sink. Then like chiseled it off and sanded it down and painted it. It looked like it a good looked pa- really good. Yeah, it's, it's the stupidest <laughs> idea ever, but it's so great at the same time. No, and then the other one is I, you know, once once I like watched that drywall patch because I, I was just like this cast this guy has to be doing like his like he's got to be playing a prank on somebody like this is not the way you would ever patch a wall. He spent like three hours doing a fifteen minute job. Yes, exactly. But then I realized that there's like the the DIYs like where they're like they like use cardboard and super glue, which apparently is like an essential to DIY making your own fucking tools. Uh, super glue or hot glue? Hot glue. Hot glue, which is even worse. That <laughs> hot glue is the crack of the DIY community. Yes, it's hot glue and cardboard, and they make these things that you're like that look really cool. They like paint them and they make it look realistic then you're like if you were actually going to use that for work it would fall apart in like two seconds oh for sure there's so many bad diy things that just don't <laughs> even make sense on the internet as well like i saw one the other day where a girl hot glued she had big fake nails she hot glued just the end of a toothbrush to her <laughs> nail and then proceeded to brush her teeth with it <laughs> and i'm like no and also please go away I, I I did see one where it was like somebody's screen was cracked and they took not epoxy, 
which I feel like would have been a better choice. I still wouldn't want to patch any cracks on my phone with epoxy. They, no. <laughs> they used super glue and some kind of, like, I think silica or some uh, some clear. And they mixed it all together and they slathered it on their phone. And then they're like, look, it's fixed. And I was like, I bet the screen doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I would put money on that. No, that's great. That's I, great. Uh, the amount of stupid shit that you can find online is just beyond limits but then what i want to do is like i want to make my own diy channel i realize i'm not ever going to do that no because that's unacceptable use of my time but it's like there's certain there's certain topics that you if you do it you have to expect heavy heavy criticism no matter how you do it yeah because there's like in carp and carpentry is one of those like rough carpentry like you could frame a house however you want but you did it wrong yeah yeah you can't please everyone all no. the time. But that's all I have about shitty DIY advice. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of shitty advice, Apple listened to somebody in their company who gave the advice of making a credit card that sucks. <laughs> so with the Apple Pay, they you can apply for a physical credit card as well. Okay. That's nice. Which is kind of cool. And it's Takes made of the point of Apple Pay, but okay. Yeah. It's made of titanium dope which is pretty cool and it's like laser engraved and all that good stuff um but the downside of this proving that apple once again doesn't know their consumer is you can't store it in leather or denim uh because what is like 99 percent of wallets made of leather and what do you put your wallet usually in denim huh <laughs> so yeah because it becomes discolored and it won't wash off what the what did they it's metal how do they manage to mess this up i don't know i i don't, i i'm gonna guess that it's not a property of titanium it has something to do with how they put together these quote unquote titanium cards yeah i mean how many people how many grown-ass adults do you know walking around with a nylon velcro <laughs> wallet <laughs> I, I know one that's all <laughs> <laughs> no most people store their credit cards in leather wallets. I mean, yeah. that's just what a bad, bad play, Apple. Is it a heavy card, though? Because there's something satisfying about having a heavy, thick ass credit card. Oh, like my Amazon card? Yes. It's like real. Yeah, yeah I like that. It, it That is satisfying. Everyone's like, oh, it's so heavy. I'm like, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> that's all the debt resting yeah. on it. <laughs> That's got 24%. <laughs> <laughs> and I never pay it off. Oh, man. Speaking of never getting paid off. Really? This was a story that I found down in the depths of Reddit. That's a long way to dive, brother. It is. It is. So there was a couple. Uh, the guy's name was Gwinera and uh, Danielle McQueen. They were arrested on copyright infringement and distribution of pirated media in April and then again in July. Uh, they sold $1.4 million worth of pirated media since 2017. They only Did got they caught for the first time in April. So they were like... How are they doing it? They were pirating shows like uh, HBO stuff mostly. Okay. Game of Thrones, uh, the recent Star Wars movies. And then they were selling it on, on Amazon. And that's where the copyright infringement comes into play because they were using the cover of the official like merchandise and stuff. And they were selling it on Amazon. And so, obviously, they got caught. <laughs> the weird part was, though, that the, the guy, uh, Jonathan, I think, he took the fall for, for the girl, for McQueen. Really? Yeah, both times. And both times, they were like... Uh, you know we're gonna do. Do you want to do a plea deal? He's like, no, I don't. I don't. I don't want it. Both times. He's like, get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't. I stopped taking notes. They got arrested or they got in trouble a third time. Did they? And for the, he he again, was going to be prosecuted, or he actually went through the trial. They declared him guilty, and in that period of time between, uh, being convicted. And being sentenced, you got like a couple weeks. Yeah. He killed her. He stabbed her with a knife. He, he called the police. He confessed his crimes. 
He was like, I'll take the punishment. I'm pleading guilty. What a psychopath. And they were asking him in the interview. He was like, dude, why did you kill McQueen? He was like, I don't want it. They, they're like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, I don't want it. They asked him again. He said, stop it. Stop it. She's McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> Why <laughs> do you do this to me? Because <laughs> it's that suddenly I was like, that makes th- no, no. <laughs> Once again, three weeks in a row. Last week, you promised there would not be a third. I know. This I clicked on the freaking link here, and it didn't take me to the article. I was like, what a asshole uh, 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 yeah the word bamboozled is in that link there if you uh if you look at it is it it is no it's not at the end how do i see the whole link copy link address paste into a new tab if you read backwards from the end and ignore the numbers oh gotcha <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Well played. I'm kind of upset again. I'm glad I caught it before. Just barely. Before you got I, the punch. One one too many <laughs> of the I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Game of, Game of Thrones storyline in a nutshell. Yeah. And uh, moving on. Uh, robots are not animals, but YouTube, unfortunately, has a inability to tell the difference. They flagged a bunch of, like, robot battles. What uh, was it? Battle bots? Yeah, yeah. They flagged a bunch of that as animal cruelty. Do you do you think that like the reason why the algorithm picked it up is because like PETA individuals went through the videos and flagged them themselves? Because that's how you bring it to the YouTube's attention, right? Mm, possibly. That's totally possible. Because we talked a while ago about PETA having a problem with people kicking robots. Yeah, to prove that they are made to not fall over. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, that's possible. I, I think it's probably more likely that based on the comments. Okay. And the, if you look at it, it like if, you, if you're pretty much blind and you watch it with glasses off, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then it might look like animals fighting. It's pretty pretty ridiculous though. Yeah, and also like the the robot fights are freaking dope, right? I, I mean, that being said, when was the last time you watched one, right? Middle school? Cuz for me it was middle school. Oh, oh well. Oh, what did you watch <laughs> on I, YouTube? I probably watched in the it afternoons. Like, like a month ago maybe. Oh, yeah. Cuz I I'm always interested in designs they bring out. Yeah. Cuz some of them just look like bad ideas. Like they've got super high center gravity, and I'm like, yeah, it's losing. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Gone forever. Aaron Hernandez. Peter's probably thrilled, though, that YouTube is trying to take this stuff down. Maybe maybe the algorithm is vegan. <laughs> maybe YouTube has raised a vegan. I, I bet those uh, robots were made with animal products some way or another. Huh. Delicious. I wonder if they're like you could eat one. Vegans? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to. They probably have absolutely no, no nutritional good value. Yeah. YouTube is reconciling the videos, and if you're listening to this and you happen to own a robot fighting YouTube channel, uh just, <laughs> just send them a message and they'll bring the videos back up. But the thing is the uh it's not the fact that it got taken down it's the fact that they lost the revenue they were expecting for that entire time that it's been taken down or you know what is it ad blocked yeah like they can't uh, they, they don't run advertisements demonetized thank you demonetized right. yeah and uh youtube's been having a lot of problems with that recently but it's yeah. just gotten so big it's impossible to manage effectively yeah i mean what is it 300 minutes as hours 300 hours a, a, a minute yeah a minute 300 it? hours of video is uploaded to youtube a minute yeah yeah that's nuts it's like, a lot what would you expect from them i don't know it's a lot but speaking of uh algorithms 
and neat little technical things. Google Photos, you can now uh, search your photos for text in them. That's pretty nifty. I think that's dope. That's and pretty neat. The first thing I thought of was, and that was mentioned, not my credit, uh, easy Wi-Fi password sharing with friends and family and side pieces. Don't they? Wow. Okay. Don't <laughs> they already have that um, for Apple? Don't they have something where you can invite people to like get on your Wi-Fi network? Yeah. So it, the way Apple works is, let's say you have an iPhone and I have an iPhone and I already am on the Wi-Fi. It'll send me a notification to like this person wants the Wi-Fi password and then I can share it with you. Oh. But like what this would do is just you have a photo of the Wi-Fi like code you and you like you instead of like going like, oh, I have a picture of it and scrolling through it. You can just type in like Wi-Fi password on your Google photos and it'll oh, pull up the photo for yeah, you. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So I think that's really, really nifty. Also, you can search pictures for like signs and landmarks, which I mean, if you're trying to put together albums or something, I don't know, you're some kind of nifty photog- photographer. And then the last thing I was thinking of is uh, I used to take pictures of the slides in college all the time. Yeah. But I never I never read them. No. But I took a picture of them because they're like, are you going to take notes? And I'm like, no, I'm just taking photos. <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> that guy. I, yeah. No, that would be cool, though, if you could put them all in a folder and just search in that folder. Yeah. Like when you're studying, you're like, I need to know this one particular term. Uh, instead of looking through all the photos, just search for it. Oh, also, that's sweet. Also, how many times I needed to prove a professor wrong were like, well, this was covered in the slides, not in the book. And I'm like, uh-uh, it wasn't in the slides either, Bert. Like, you little bitch. Like, <laughs> give me my freaking A. Damn it, Bert. <laughs> Bert is what I was going to say. So I think that, you know, Google is making strides here. Yeah. That's a good good play, good move. Good for them. That's, that's, that's cool. I like yeah. that. Technology is good. Robots Agreed. are bad. Not true. Oh, oh, try. Got a little mixed up. <laughs> Feeling a little peckish. I can go for some grass right now. <laughs> Maybe some bark, a bark smoothie. That sounds horrific. A sapling smoothie. It's full of dense new treants. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good one. All right, all right. Let's move away from some general tech and uh, let's talk about my new vehicle. Your new vehicle, the Toyota Supra? Yeah. Yeah? It's sitting outside. You want to go look? Let's go look. You go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are... It's one of those weird phenomenons where they're being resold or sold, in this case, from the dealer for much more than they're actually stickered at. Yeah. Because I think they only made 1500 of the 2020 launch edition Toyota Supra. They're being sold at the dealership for eighty or 100000 when the MSRP starts at fifty thousand, yeah, that's but like that, price gouging. But that's a recommended price. That's true, and they can just say screw that, and people will pay it. Yeah, I mean the first twenty twenty Supra sold for charity, uh, for two point one million dollars at the Barrett Jackson auction in Scottsdale this year, and I mean that that's a big auction. There's a lot of money changing yeah. hands there. And so I'm not that surprised, but you know that like, it's not that they're like, Oh, we're donating money to this charity. They're like, I want that car. I want, not only I want that car, but I want people to know I spent $2 million on this car. Yeah. It's like art collecting for the children. Yeah. It's like art collecting for charity. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. There is a dealership though (laughs) in Delaware that will give you the opportunity to buy a Toyota Supra at the, it's a specific package. Uh, at the MSRP of $57,375, all you have to do is win the lottery. And you have to pay money to get the tickets to go to this. Right. To- yeah. Well, that's how that's how lotteries typically work. Yeah, you have to pay yeah. 20 bucks a ticket and you get entered into a raffle and the winner gets the chance to buy the car for 60 grand. Which is, I guess, if you spend 20 grand on raffle tickets... And then you still don't have a good chance of winning. So it's, a, it's an awful idea. It, it, this is crazy. This is absolutely madness. Nostalgia sells, man. It really does. Prove time and time again by movies and, in this case, the Toyota Supra. Yeah. Kudos to Toyota because they they probably expected something like this. But I don't know why they wouldn't just either make more or raise the MSRP. I, I don't know how they make these decisions. Uh, maybe people would be off put 
if Toyota was selling it for eighty grand. Yeah, uh, but people are still paying for it. I mean, it's 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 a it's a phenomenon. I've heard of one other vehicle being priced significantly above MSRP recently, and that was a Civic Type R. Apparently, they're they're pricing them like ten grand above what they're actually worth, so forty instead of thirty or something like that. Yeah, but then you have a Type R. Yeah, then you have Type R. But it's just it's it's a strange phenomenon. Normally, almost. In all cases, you get money off of the MSRP. Yeah. It's just, it's a strange, strange issue. But it's for charity. I will say that guy, this the Well, Del- this one's not for charity. I thought it was. Oh, wait, maybe it is. Yeah, it's a lottery into the Yeah, char- th- okay, you're right. This one is for charity. I just yeah. didn't write that down because I'm stupid. <laughs> just like, I'm glad that the, the, you know, at least they're doing something with it. I think we can pretty much stop talking about the Supra forever. At this point, I think yeah. we've covered just about everything there is to cover. About. But like most topics, we like to beat it into the ground every week. Oh, we'll come back to it for sure. <laughs> it's just the thing that's in the news right now. Yeah. It's it's hard not to. And we appreciate cars, so therefore it comes into our podcast. And new things. Siege added a battle pass? Yeah. No. Yeah. Come on. They did. I'm, what, good, I'm sure they're making money off of it. I'm sure they're making money. So it's a I've, good play. I yeah. I mean, it's it's not surprising that they did. As long as the gameplay doesn't change because of the battle pass. And I don't think that it will. Good. My th- and it, it was hard to get specifics on it because it's not out yet. But I think it's going to be more along the lines of outside of the game things. So the the battle pass is good ish. But also really bad and annoying for games like Fortnite, where you have the weekly challenges and you have to go to certain locations yeah. and do certain things in those locations. And people And then everybody's there and it just really makes things obnoxious. Yeah. And and, and nobody enjoys doing that stuff. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what these what these things are gonna be, but there there are tiers and I'm assuming it's gonna be like win two games on this map or like win several you know situations of terrorist hunt or whatever it is or yeah some, something like that play this operator and whatever things like that instead of you know go to this corner of this location on this map and sit there for an hour Be so sponsored by coleman on point a for <laughs> oh yeah just camping out grilled it's uh it's a good move for them i guess but it, it is disappointing to me yeah, I I kind of wish they'd you know get away from the battle pass, but I get their company to try to make money, and that's it seems like a relatively good way for a company to make money. Yeah, it just seems to me that everything that they've done up until now has been for the player, for the consumer, yeah, and not so much to make money. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, it's there to make money, but it seems like they've been very faithful to to the players, and this is just kind of a kick in the feet. Okay never heard it put like that because it's not as bad as a kick in the face you're right but it's just it's a little annoying and it just hurts a little bit yeah it does hurt (laughs) just like not having predicted the 2008 financial crisis and making billions of dollars that hurts yeah i mean i wasn't i didn't have any i i didn't have i i would have if i had made a million percent of what i owned at that point i would have had forty (laughs) dollars So Michael Berry, played by Christian Bale in the excellent, phenomenal movie, The Big Straight. Short. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely butchered it at the end. But the confidence. The, the, uh, he, it came out this week that he owns 3% of GameStop. Nice. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to follow Michael Berry here. I want him to manage my uh, mutual fund, but I don't have the uh, kind of right so the uh the, a little bit more backstory he predicted the financial or he several people independently predicted the financial crisis of 2008 and were able to short the market and make a ton of money yeah like an unfathomable amount of money i did not pronounce that word correctly but it this guy i, I it, he either got really really lucky or he's just a genius i'm leaning towards the genius part yeah I mean, he, what he predicted in 2000, it was, I think it was years before. Yeah. And then he locked out the, 
they're all all the people who had their money in his fund he locked them out of touching it right according to the movie which i think is pretty accurate yeah I know. yeah that's a really good movie it, I, it's one of it's one of my favorites it's it's yeah definitely one of my favorite non-comedy movies okay I, I, i'll give it i'll put it in my top five yeah it's it's very good very good and it really helps explain the financial crisis which i did not understand before <laughs> but now i get it thank yeah. you steve carella and others it, it the only reason i so one of my best friends uh, in college he's all about money not not like making money but like he is financial he's a financial advisor right so he was like he's like you need to watch the big short you'll really really like it He's like, it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. And I was like, what's it about? And he's like, it's about shorting the housing market in 2008. And I was like, that doesn't sounds, sound interesting. That sounds terrible, man. And then, you know, for a year, he like pestered me about watching it. And he like him and I used to, uh, started talking finance. And then I once I watched, it, I was like, this is a phenomenal movie. It is really good. It's good very acting. Well done. Just an overall, just a really interesting way to portray what was going on. Yes, Absolutely. And I, the reason that Michael Burry is in here is because GameStop is a video game yes. company. Sorry, we need to loop that back together. Moving back a little bit. And this little interesting tidbit of information came out the exact same week that GameStop laid off hundreds of employees because they're a failing business. Michael's making moves, though. Yeah, he said He said that despite the fact that they're in a declining industry or whatever, like the physical brick and mortar game locations. Yeah. He says their balance sheet is pretty good. I'll go off. I'm like, okay. I mean, you know, anybody who, who buys a game from you for 47 cents and sells it for $47. Yeah. I'm sure they're, they're making (laughs) a reasonable profit on that. Yeah. They don't need to do it much. They, They just nickel and dime everyone across the country. Yeah. But in the reverse way, diamond nickel no no that like when people nickel and dime you they they charge you the tiny bits of money but they're just giving you shitty money no uh, yeah yeah sorry you're right i, you're know, right. Yeah. I know i usually am but i found it i found it i found it weird i don't understand why anybody would want to invest in gamestop at this point but maybe he maybe he's on something i'm not gonna go ahead and buy gamestop uh but you know maybe maybe somebody else will Watch him just, you know, he bought into GameStop because he lost a bet, you know, somewhere. <laughs> and everyone's like, Michael Burry's like investing in GameStop. We should all get into it. They're like, he's just like. It would be funny if that actually spurred on investment in GameStop. It, I'm sure that there's a, there's a spike once this came out. I wouldn't Because be there's surprised. a lot of people who respect his opinion in investment. Well, yeah, he was right one time. That's all it takes, really. Yeah, is to be right big one time. One time, if he was right, real big, <laughs> real big. An interesting fellow. Yeah, an interesting fellow. But I'm sure even Warren Buffett has been wrong in the past. I'm sure. Positive. <laughs> well, I think that's all we have for this week. Uh, we will be back for the next two weeks, if everything goes according to plan. As Amazon reviews, though, with Amazon reviews. Thank you so much for listening. Consider becoming a patron. We treat our patrons very, very well. Yeah. They're so well. <laughs> it's 100% worth the $2. 100%. And goodbye. Bye. <laughs>